Okay. Um, yeah. Welcome all to this uh, um, uh, talk um, about Gradle. So I'm gonna start with talking about Gradle momentum, uh, where we are, about the roadmap, and then uh, Luke is giving uh, the second, the longer part of the presentation and talking about some in-depth features of Gradle. Okay. So. Um, <clears throat> Let's talk about uh, the momentum of Gradle. Before uh, I'm going to start with that, who of you is using Gradle already? Right, so it's kind of 50%, right? So momentum is, uh, of course, for every uh, technology, a very important metric. But for build platforms, it's, uh, it's even more relevant because it's a very conservative domain. So uh, uh, especially, uh, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're not talking about early adapter, but, but the majority, uh, the, the, the classical enterprises of the world, before they switch their build, they have to have a lot of confidence in regard to the momentum of a technology. So uh, they, want to, they want to be sure that the technology exists in the next 10 years, right? And they want to make sure that the problems they have have already been solved somewhere else. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> yeah, so talking about the momentum of Gradle, we had uh, just in 2014 1.5 million downloads, right? So that's a... Uh, uh, very exciting number for us. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. If you look at Google Trends, you see the growth Gradle is, is having. It's pretty, you know, but, but not, just, not, just, you don't, not just see the momentum. You also see the substance of it if you compare it with a technology like Cloudera, right? And you can play around if you go to Google Trends. So it's a pretty uh, uh, expressive and, and impressive metric regarding uh, uh, the, the the, the growth of Cradle in, in Mindshare and so on. I wish it were Cradle were revenue against Cloudera revenue, but not yet. <laughs> so uh, there's a nice little library of books out there, uh, growing and growing. Uh, there's a uh, Cradle for Android book uh, uh, that is work in progress, a Cradle cookbook book that is work in progress. We are working on some more stuff, so that's also uh, 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 yeah, a nice indicator of, of what is happening. Um, so uh, uh, I don't know who of you knows Olo. It's a uh, uh, they uh, uh, um, that's it's a platform who analyzes all the open source projects in the world, and they they include you know the, the very top Chromium and whatnot, and then up down to the very small, and then analyze activity and stuff. So and what they're saying over for Gradle is uh, uh, over the past 12 months. 55 developers contributed new code to Cradle. This is one of the largest open source teams in the world. So there's enormous activity that we have, not just from inside uh, uh, the Cradle core team, but with a lot of contributions from, from the outside. Overall, I think we had 123 people contributing. And, um, uh, and this is just the Cradle core. So on top of the Cradle core, we have 200 plus community Cradle plugins and growing. Right, and uh, so there was an interesting study by uh, the Rebel Labs, the, the guys from J Rebel, uh, published just a couple of weeks ago, uh, asking Java developers what technologies are developers really interested in, talking about all the developer tooling, right, CI languages, and so on and so on, and the tool where most developers said, "I want to learn more about," was Gradle with 58%. So that was. Uh, very, very interesting and, and nice to see. Um, so, so much for the momentum. Um, we are about to release Gradle 2.0. The Gradle 2.0 release candidate is out. And uh, Gradle 2.0 is a maturity release, right? So we did a tremendous work on improving the many aspects of the performance, many aspects of the memory consumption. Um, we worked a lot on making Gradle the best dependency management system out there. Uh, we, as most of you probably know, uh, uh, last year at Google I.O. it was announced that Gradle is going to become the new official build system for Android. And we did a lot of work together with the Android folks, especially for the Android Studio integration to, uh, uh, to improve the user experience. Still a lot of stuff needs to be done, but we're working on that. So who of you is using Gradle in the context of Android? Yeah. So then something very exciting uh, 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 happened during the last 12 months. Uh, 
Cradle became a world-class C, C++, Objective-C assembler build system. Uh, so that's something we invested a lot of time in. And uh, if you do native stuff, have a look at what Gradle has to offer. It's pretty exciting and unique. Um, so Gradle 2.0 uh, has, has a lot of great improvements, but we are far from done, far from done. So before I talk about the roadmap, I would like to talk a little bit about the problems that we're seeing in the industry. I mean, there are many problems when it comes to uh, the production of software, but there are two problems that are uh, uh, jumping basically into your face. So one is the code bases are growing, right? So we are involved with some very, very large software stacks, some of the largest software stacks of the world. And when we talk with our clients and users, we have numbers like their code base is growing 20% each year. Their code base is growing 100% each year, which means if you have serious problems at the moment uh, uh, with, your, with your build automation and continuous delivery, and you don't tackle them in a couple of years, they will kill you, right? period. You don't have a choice. You have to do something just because of this dynamic of the growing code bases. And there's another very important dynamic. The complexity is increasing. So um, the, the number of software, different software platforms, languages, et cetera, you're using to solve your problems is increasing. Right? You have, uh, uh, so shops that have been pure Java shops five years ago, they're now at least Java, Android, iOS. But they're probably also JavaScript, they are Scala, I don't have to tell you. So the heterogeneity and the multi-platform aspect of, of software is, is a reality for not just for advanced companies, but also for standard enterprise companies. And, and uh, Cradle is the first true multi-platform build system defined by uh, uh, that it is used in, in various communities, uh, uh, Java, C++, Android, Scala, JavaScript, at one point, .NET. Uh, we haven't gotten there yet. I guess you're not so interested in that here. <laughs> so, um, and that is, that, is a, that is a key quality of a, of a next generation build system, to embrace the multi-platform nature of modern software stacks. And uh, again, that, that's one of the challenges, and Gradle is, is uh, facing this challenge and is doing a lot to uh, uh, make the experience for multi-platform builds even better. I will talk about that in a, in a second. So, uh, LinkedIn is one of, the, one of the large Cradle users out there. We have a very, very uh, 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 close and deep cooperation. And just to, to get an idea of what can be achieved, in 2011, it took them 30 days to release a new version of their software, which is even by nowadays standards, if you, if you take the average from all the organizations out there, is a very good number, but they were much more ambitious, and they're now, they're now able to uh, release, have two releases per day. So in 2011, when they created a new feature, by average, it took 15 days until it reached the clients, right? Now they have two releases per day, so it takes a couple of hours for a new feature that is ready to uh, uh, reach the client. So they improved the inventory term by a factor of 30. This is, this is revolution, right? And, and many organizations are far, far away from that. They're even far away from being able to release every 30 days. So, and uh, um, the, one of our goals is to bring such a revolution within the reach of, let's call them, normal companies that are less skilled uh, and have less resources to throw at the problem compared to LinkedIn. So, um, so if you look at our roadmap, um, one, one thing we, we uh, 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 will focus on within the next six months is improve certain aspects of the Gradle performance. And uh, for the people using Gradle, we want to get rid of the configuration time, the time it takes Gradle to configure a build. Uh, this is extremely helpful for the very large builds, like LinkedIn has a 4,000 Submodule Gradle build, and the configuration time is hitting them. But uh, uh, for the people doing Android, I guess you might not be completely happy with the responsiveness of the interaction with Android Studio and Gradle. So I wouldn't be, be surprised if you say yes. <laughs> 
So, uh, and that's another aspect of that. For deep IDE integration, where, where the IDE is continuously communicating with the build, uh, uh, at the moment, uh, the, the fact that the configuration time is, is not neglectable makes that uh, 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 responsiveness experience not perfect. So, so that is the key thing we're working on, is making Gradle much more, basically making it immediately responsive to uh, 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 when it comes to interacting with the IDE or when it comes to starting the build. Uh, another thing is making Gradle fundamentally parallelizable and distributable. We have parallelization in Gradle on a coarse-grained level, but we want to make this much more fine-grained and uh, uh, also more reliable that at the moment you need to be aware of certain factors so uh, to, to properly decouple stuff and we want to take this burden away from you and when we uh, uh, have reached that point uh, uh, you will see Cradle 3.0 where parallelization is switched on by default and the next step is then making it distributable. Uh, another aspect that we are working on is uh, uh, we call it cache everything. So basically Every build output should be put in a cache that can be shared with other builds and also with other builds on other machines, right? So, uh, uh, so when you have, when you have uh, uh, large organizations like LinkedIn with 1,000 plus developers, that everything that is produced somewhere can be reused on some other machine, right? So, and then one thing we are uh, very excited about is uh, uh, making the next big step when it comes to dependency management. If you look at dependency management as we have it now, we think we have already the best solution out there, but uh, it has limitations which are specifically visible when you leave the Java world and enter the native world and enter the Android world. So it's just not enough to have uh, uh, the group, the artifact name and the version uh, as, as the fundamental identifiers uh, that drive dependency management. There are so many other things like, you know, uh, when you go to the Android world, uh, uh, what app store are you, are you uh, uh, um, uh, writing this app for? Or when you go to the native world, 32 uh, or 64 bit, uh, uh, which processor and stuff like that. And make that a core quality of dependency management that you just say, hey, I have a dependency on Foo and I work for this architecture, just give me the right thing across the whole dependency graph. Uh, or with Scala, uh, uh, Scala is not binary backwards compatible, so you, you always want to get the right variant of your library for the specific uh, Scala version uh, you are compiling against, or you're compiling with, I should say. So, um, that, and that is a key aspect. Uh, JavaScript has similar problems. Uh, to improve the multi-platform capabilities of Cradle. Uh, we will continue to uh, uh, heavily invest uh, into the native support. What is uh, uh, very exciting for us is that, uh, um, and I think at Twitter we had some, this, some talks about that. So the Google Android team is now uh, spending a lot of time into switching the NDK support from make scripts to using the native built-in Cradle functionality, right? So, uh, so uh, once this is released, Gradle will be one of the major C, C++ build systems in the world, just because of the fact that, that, end, that every, every native Android extensions will use the native Gradle support. And uh, that will definitely improve uh, uh, the whole Android experience a lot and uh, uh, yeah, we'll create a lot of visibility for our native capabilities, so we are very, very excited about that. Um, last thing is tooling. Uh, so we, 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 we have a lot planned for improving uh, spe specifically the Eclipse integration with Gradle. Who of you is using Eclipse? Right, so who of you is using IntelliJ? <coughs> Welcome in the Silicon Valley. That would be a <laughs> different number on the East Coast. But yeah, I mean, the good thing with IntelliJ support, this is driven by Android Studio. So uh, a lot of improvements there will automatically come uh, because Android Studio is improving. Okay, that's uh, uh, all from my side. Luke, you're ready to go? And in the meantime, Bruce, you have, you have to make, you have some announcements to make, right?